Hello everybody, welcome to this short segment on um, understanding and demystifying the U-curve optimization, which is a very good read from uh, Don Reinstein's The Principle of Product Development Flow. To set the stage, uh, we have a team of seven uh, where we have a quality engineer who has uh, only manual testing to deal with at this point uh, for the financial application. Um, and he's every time a scope goes through, he has to kind of do 40 regression test cases. Talking about the team backlog, currently there are uh, four user stories, uh, including enabler, and the associated uh, uh, test cases are listed uh, side by side. Okay, let's move on. Now, we all absolutely understand at this point the uh, benefits of small batch sizes, uh, you, know, you know, as quoted in the book uh, and with our practical and scientific experience, we all know that small batches flow through faster uh, in the system uh, and there is a lot of savings because of cheap, cheaper debugging, cheaper testing, less non-value added activities, better code, overall better economics, right? Um, what do I mean? What do we mean by that, right? So uh, let's say, for example, in this team, the BIP limit is one. Uh, then the whole team will just swarm on this one user story, and then it will just flow through the system seamlessly and fast. Uh, but the pain point is: imagine you are that one tester, you are that one test engineer uh, in that uh, team. You are going to uh, be very uh, concerned and worried because you have to do these 30 regression test cases every time. And you know, for example, uh, when this one uh, goes through and then you pick up the uh, next user story like this, again, you have to now redo those uh, 40 regression test cases, which is uh, like a nightmare, right? I mean, nobody, I don't think uh, anybody would like to do, be in a scenario to do that. So, um, uh, but we all understand that smaller the batch sizes, you know, the ideal scenario, WIP is one is just so beautiful. So, um, the compromise on this is explained uh, through the concepts of holding cost and the transaction cost. Let's talk more about it. Okay, so what is this transaction cost and what is this holding cost? Transaction cost is the cost of sending a batch to the next process, you know. And the holding cost is the cost of not sending it. In our use case, um, the holding cost will disappear only when the value gets to the customer, right? Otherwise, even if you deploy all the way to production and then uh, not yet give it to the customer, that is going to be a holding cost. Okay, now, how do we know what is the optimal batch size? Uh, you know, if WIP limit of one is not feasible at this point in our maturity level, uh, we can find that uh, by the uh, intersection of both the holding cost and the transaction cost. Okay, now, if you see here, when the items per batch are less, the holding cost is less, but the transaction cost is high, and the vice versa. But when you let these two things intersect, this point here kind of gives you the optimal batch size, and the uh, minimal total cost is found by adding the uh, you know the holding cost and the transaction cost which will come around this point right here okay but this gives us a optimal batch size now what do you mean by this optimal batch size consider the same scenario let's say we change the whip limit as two here which means uh, the test engineer does not do one um, story at a time but kind of combines um, you know two stories and then does regression testing uh, for both together. So the advantage at this point is, uh, you know, the flow is uh, enabled. At the same time, the test engineer is not too worried uh, because he's, uh, you know, he does not have to do one story at a time for regression test scenarios, but then is using two stories uh, together. So if you see here, there is 30 regression test cases for the first one, 40 for the second one. So it helps him to optimize the work uh, uh, in a better way but uh, the flow would definitely be a little bit lesser than the ideal scenario of uh, whip equal to one so this is the optimal batch size now how do we keep improving on this right so we need to the, the you know to we need to reduce this transaction cost and to do that uh, we need to invest in uh, devsecops uh, uh, as an example let me explain so 
when this uh, transaction cost gets lower and lower it cuts the holding cost towards the left we will be shifting left and cutting here and thereby the items per batch will become smaller and smaller and smaller so if we don't have all the best practices of devsecops in play we will not be reduce able to reduce the we will not be able to reduce the transaction cost and uh, hence we will not be able to reduce the items per batch hence we will not be able to reduce the holding cost so things like microservices, things, be best practices of uh, test-driven development, behavior de development, uh, things like continuous integration, um, you know, continuous deployment, um, you know, continuous security, continuous compliance, and more importantly, release on demand, which is basically decoupling deployment from demand. These are all various uh, best practices which will help us to reduce the transaction cost, um, hence, uh, the reducing also the items per batch okay so in conclusion devsecops and automation reduces transaction cost and uh, is, and the more you invest on that you will see that if you look at this picture here the place where the um, optimal batch size is getting cut is slowly shifted more towards the left left and left and uh, how do you identify and march towards that uh, is by using SAPE's DevOps transformation canvas where it will help you to identify uh, the key, the, the, the main ones what you should focus on first. That way you can uh, march towards uh, lowering your transaction cost and which will indeed uh, help towards uh, shifting your, uh, um, uh, you know, shifting your optimal batch size towards the left. So uh, this is a quick explanation about how um, the um, um, uh, U-curve optimization works with a practical example of uh, um, testing and uh, DevOps. Thank you for listening.